Okay, so first off for this video in real time, I'm going to show you how to set up your actions. Actions are a neat little tool that we're going to be using to color animation. And what they do really is they they just uh, they make what would be a long winded process um, possible with just clicking one button. So I'll show you what my action does. I'll show you what we'll be recording. So say we want to color this ball in red. We have our background color is red down here. Uh, what, I, what I'll do, what this action will do, I'll just click outside the lines, go to my action, press play, go to my color, control backspace to fill, and then control D to deselect. And that will color the frame, and that's how I color my frames. Yeah, it's a bit, you know, it's not as easy as the fill bucket, like in Flash. Uh, you probably could just fill your lines in Photoshop, but since it's a pixel-based program, you might have some fuzziness going on. But uh, yeah, it's it's not it's fairly quick and easy. I just sort of go along like this, and then it's already done. So that's how quick it is. So I'll be showing you how to record that. So I'll just go ahead and undo those. Uh, what that action does is it just sort of um, it it takes this selection, it expands it by two, it inverses it, and then it stops. And that's all that little action does. So it prevents me from having to do all those things manually with just by just by clicking play. So I'll show you how to how to record one of these. Uh, so first off, to get the actions up in the first place, you go to window and then actions, and it'll be this little play button up here. First, you'll probably have this long list of actions here underneath default actions. Um, these are just the default actions that Photoshop gives you, and I like to tuck them away just so they're out of the way because I don't really use them. And if you want to do what I've done and made your own folder for your own actions, you can just click this little folder icon down here and just name it whatever you want. So I'll just save my actions. Um, and then you'll have a little folder there to save your actions. I already have one, so I'll just go delete that. Okay, so you want to go about recording your actions. What we're going to do is we're going to record um, expanding a selection by two and then inversing it. So how we do that, first of all, I'm going to select outside my lines because we don't want to record that because if we do, um, it will play the same each time and um, it gets, it doesn't work each time is what I'm trying to say. Um, so we've selected outside the lines, then we're going to go to this little new action button down here, it looks like a new layer button. So we'll click that, we'll name it wherever we want, so I'm going to name it expand by 2 and inverse so I know what it does. Um, I'm going to make sure it's set to my actions so I know that's what it, where it's going to save. I'm going to press record. Now you can see the little record button has been pressed there, so it's recording everything we do at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, perform what I want it to record. So I'm going to go to Select, Modify, Expand. I'm going to expand the selection by two so that it hugs the lines a bit a bit more and you don't get that sort of outside edge. Um, I'm going to go Select, Inverse, so it's inverted the selection. I'm going to go, um, yeah, and I'm going to stop it right there, sorry. So you press the little square stop button there and it's stopped recording the action. Now you can see this is the action we've just recorded. So if you click the little arrow, it says what's inside the action. So it just expands the selection and then inverts it. And now what we can do is we can go and select outside the lines on our lines, on our line layer, sorry. Uh, press play on the action, it will perform that. And I'll go down to my color layer, control D, control backspace, sorry, to fill with my background color and then control D to deselect, and there it's colored my frame. And we can go ahead and do that with the rest. Just like that. And that's how I color my frames. So yes, it's more sort of long-winded and finicky than flashes, but it's still fairly quick and it gets the job done. Also, um, if I'm, say, doing markings on a character, 
Um, I'm going to want to lock the layers so that it doesn't go outside the colour I've already drawn. So as I'm going along f um, filling my colours, I usually click this little lock button in the corner on, on the layers window. Um, so later on when I'm doing markings, I don't have to worry about going outside the lines. So that's all that is. Okay, now really quickly, I'm just going to go over something that I didn't go over in the first video. So, and that's just how to collapse your frames together. So say that we have all of our lining frames, so we have three here. We don't want them to be these steps, we've all finished with them, so we want to collapse them. All you do is you drag it down onto the same layer here. Make sure you drag it down and not up, otherwise it'll make loads of video groups. And then they'll all be on the same uh, level here. What this will do is it will create a video group, so as you can see it's video group 1 and it showed up on the window, um, the layers window 2. Uh, that's just a sort of a group to represent that these are all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name these line art. And there you go, you can see where your, where your line art is there. And that's all you do. Okay, so going on to the colouring. So I'm cutting down my one colour layer that I made above the sketch and I'm cutting it down much like I did with the lines. I've coloured all my colour layers green there so you can see which ones they are. And then just there I use my action to fill them all in with this grey colour. I've got a reference for this character up on the side so I can pick his colours as I go. And then here I'm using the freeform marquee tool just to uh, fill in the shapes that are his markings and I use an onion skin to make sure they're not slipping around and doing any funny things. Uh, just there was a little hiccup because um, my footage got corrupted, so uh, I missed, um, I lost the uh, footage of him doing the face, but here I'm just doing the markings on his chest with the brush, using the onion skin to make sure it doesn't do any weird shapes again. Um, here to colour his eyebrows and his nose, I'm selecting inside the lines, I'm expanding the selection by two pixels and I'm filling on the colour layer. I've got that on an action just so it's a bit quicker. And in there I'm just colouring his mouth by hand. Uh, you could probably colour your eyes the same way I coloured the eyebrows and the nose, but with my eyes the lines are open, so I have to colour them in by hand. Make sure your colour layers are locked by the way, so when you do colour in the markings they don't go outside of the colour, it'll save you a lot of time. And make sure your lines don't have holes in them either, because um, it won't fill in it won't fill in the lines. But that's easy fix. You just go and find the hole, uh, draw it in, and then you should be able to fill them. And then here I'm just adding more color details to the eyes. That's optional if you want to do that. And here I'm colouring the pupils the same way I coloured the eyebrows and the nose, so I'm selecting inside the lines and then colouring them in. And then here's what the final colour render looks like. Okay, here, this is um, a little bit faster than real time. I'm just going to show you how I set up my shading. So I have a background already made there, and I'm just going to go ahead and paste it um, underneath the animation I already have. I'm not going to render my final animation with this background, it's just there just as a colour reference so I can know what colours to shade with and uh, what to add to the character to make it sort of blend into the background and act as if it was there. So I have my background there and I cut it down so it's the length that I need. And then I make, I'm making a group right there and I've named it shading and I've duplicated my colour layer, my colour video group, and I've put it into the shading group. Um, and I've just coloured it orange there, just so you can see uh, what's going on with the shading. The reason why I duplicated it is so that when I um, end up doing the shading, I can just make it a clipping mask underneath that. Okay, there I've made a new layer, and I've um, a, mu a new layer within the shading group there. Um, I have cut it once, as you can see. I've set it. Um, I'm setting both the layers to multiply because that's my layer mode I shade with and I'm making a clipping mask for both of them and they're clipping to the duplicated color group underneath that 
What clipping masks do is that they um, prevent uh, the layer that's being clipped from going outside the layer that you're clipping it to. So the layer above, um, I have a clipping mask, so it clips to the layer below, which happens to be the duplicated color group. And that means that the shading won't go outside of the color. Okay, and now onto the shading. Uh, much like what I did with the colouring, I'm using the freeform marquee tool to select the areas I want to fill and then I'll control backspace and fill them in on my little shading layers down there. Now our layer setup is a bit different to before. Uh, we have our shading layer inside a pre-made group that we've named shading and I've coloured it all in orange so you can see it. And you can see I've left it in steps and I'm cutting it as I go. Uh, the reasoning for this is that if I merge them all down onto one video group, onto one um, level, uh, they won't clip. Um, we need them to clip to the colour so that they don't go outside the colour. And that's what the duplicated colour layer is there for. Um, so we duplicated all of our colour frames, we put them inside the shading folder, um, and that gives the shading layers something to clip to. Uh, and the reason why I'm cutting as I'm going along is so that um, uh, it keeps things tidier, like I won't have a giant staircase of frames. And um, yeah, so I just cut them as I go along. And I cut the frame I need afterwards before I do it, just so I don't have to erase what I've done when I make a new frame. If that makes sense. So. Um, the hardest bit here really is figuring, figuring out where the shadow is going to be, um, which I had a little bit of trouble with here because um, I wanted the light to come from the left and I wanted the shadow to drift across the face as he turned, which I think I achieved, but see what you think in the final animation. Make sure you know where your light source is coming from and shade in a color that will that is um, suited to your um, background, so I'm shading with a dark blue so that he fits in with the background a bit more. Uh, in a bit I will make an overlay layer on top of all of this, yeah there we go, um, that is above the shading group. Um, I'm clipping them down to the shading group and I'm adding gradients to them and then clipping them down to the shading group, changing them to overlay and all that stuff. So these are the different stages of the shading.